Hi everyone, this is Adam Virgil, and in this video we're going to learn how to create player profiles. In the previous video, which is a requirement for your success in this framework, we created player profiles. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to display the player profiles on a page. And on this page, if you follow along with this series, we will also include testing and key performance indicator data. But using performance profiles or using a player profile are agnostic to the data that you're collecting otherwise. You could display monitoring data, data from an export. It's just a nice visually appealing way to capture the main components of an athlete, most of it, if not all of it, relating to their profile or their demographics. To start this process, I want to introduce you to drop down menus. The way that we can create a drop down menu is I'm going to click on cell A3. And we're going to go to data, data validation, a list from a range is good. The first thing is cell range, and that's where we're applying this validation to. And this list from a range will make it a drop down menu if we select show drop down list in cell, which it is. Now we pick the list of names or the list of drop down items that we want to select from. To do that, we can click on this button here. Now it says select data range. Now, where is this range of names that we want to select in our player drop down? Let's go to our profiles. And we don't want profiles A2 to I986 to be in our dropdown. We just want profiles A2 colon to A, which just goes from the first name or the name in A2 all the way to the last name in column A in this sheet. We click OK and then reject input on invalid data, which will make which means that we cannot select a name that is not in this list which removes some potential for human error, we can click Save. And if we go back to our player profile, now we have this little arrow thing here. And if we click it, we see all of our athlete names. And that's great. We can pick one. The next thing that I'm going to do is I want to merge some cells together. Usually I do this last once I figure out what I want my profile to look like. But I know what I want mine to look like, so I'm just going to merge them now. I'm going to select L, uh, cell A3, go all the way to D3, make sure they're all highlighted, and that we started with cell A3 in our highlight sequence. And we can click on this button here that says Merge Cells. Now we have everything merged together. And if we go to this alignment area, I'm going to align everything in the center. So the name is in the center. And I'm also going to align it vertically in the center so it's not on the bottom of the cell. Didn't change much because the cell isn't very big. Now that we have a name selected, what we can do is we can tie in the profile data in here to the name that we have selected so that we bring in the information for the right name or the name that we picked, which will be relevant because we're going to use the same philosophy or same concept we're trying to get data from our testing database and other databases for the name that we pick. And one thing that I do want to mention here that I didn't mention in my profiles video is that in an ideal world, you use something more than a name to differentiate athletes. Two athletes could have the same name, and that could be a common thing. John Smith might be a common name. And generally, you'll want to create a unique athlete identifier for each athlete that corresponds with their data in your data sets. But in practice, in reality, in, in our world, that doesn't exist in a lot of environments. So one way that you can get around having duplicate names is by differentiating the names of the athletes within your data sets. You might have a junior or a senior or a space after a last name versus no space after a last name or a dash, there are different things you could do to manipulate the name so that 
Um, the names for each athlete are independent of one another. Okay, let's start getting data. So the first thing that, me, that we might want to get is the photo, right? We put an image in the cell for a reason. So let's create a nice area for this to go. I'm just going to highlight these cells, A4 through B9, and merge them together. And we're going to learn about a couple of functions called index and match to get the photo of the athlete that we picked. To start, we'll go equals index, open parenthesis. And now what is index? Oops, I meant to click on the, what is index? The first thing that we need is a reference. And this is essentially what we want to go into the cell or the options that could possibly go into this cell. In our case, we're really just looking for an image. So if we go to our profiles, I don't know why it always does that. And we select the column with our images in it, column E. That can be our reference because we want some image, one of these images to go in that cell. The next thing that we need to do for index comma is give it a row number to get the image from and a column number to get the image from. Well, let's just pick row five for now and comma column one for now because we only have one column that we're looking in and row five would be one, two, three, four, five. It should be this image here. We close a parenthesis and click enter. That's the image that we get. Great. But first of all, this isn't the image for the person that we picked. And also, if we change the name, the image isn't coming along for the ride. So to make the image do that, when we tell the index function what row we want to get the image from, Instead of giving a row as a number, we can use the function called match, open parenthesis. And what match does is it looks for a piece of information and finds it in an, in an area and gives you the row or the number that that instance occurs in. And we'll go through an example here. So for our search key in this match function, function is we're going to look for the name that we pick. The next thing that we need is a range to look for that name that we pick. And that range is going to be, let's go to our profiles. It's going to be column A in our profiles where we type in our athlete's name. Comma. And now it asks us, does it need to be an exact match or not, essentially. And zero means yes, it does. So we type in a zero and close the parenthesis, and that's the end of the match function. So what we're saying now is we want to look for the index fun function. We want to look for something in column E, which is where all, all, all wow, which is where all of our images are. And for the row of the index function, we want to get the row that matches the that where this name matches the name of the athlete that we picked. And the column for the index function is column one, because we're only looking in one of them. So now we should find that the row number is row, row one, two, because the second row, the name Laquan James, which you can't see right now, matches the name that we picked, and we should get this image. Close the parenthesis and click enter. Oh, well, I have a different person selected, but this image right here should match whatever row this name is in. So Jim Harding is in row three. So we're getting the image from row three, and that is correct. Great. And if we switch the name, we get a different image. Awesome so far. I'm already going over my time limit. So I'm going to quickly try to bring in the other data that we need. And we can do that because this function, we just use it over and over again. The first thing that we want to do here is put dollar signs around before each letter and each number. The reason why we do that is so that when we copy and paste this function around, it doesn't move. But the last thing that we want to do before we click enter is we want to add in another function on top of all of this. And that function is called if error. What if error does, let's go if error, open parenthesis, 
that pretty much says, if there's an error with whatever is going on inside of it, which is all this stuff, comma, what do you want to do? And in our case, just in case there is an error, I'm going to go quote, quote, which means blank. So if there's an error with this function, I don't want it to display an ugly error value. I want it to just be blank. I can close the parenthesis and click enter. And there we go. Our formula is done. The last couple things that we'll want to do is you'll want to display whatever profile data is relevant for you. And to do that, let's copy this function. Let's copy this function in here and we'll paste it right here and click enter. And we'll copy it again and paste it here and click enter and again and again and again. Now these could be five different pieces of criteria in your profile. So let's go to our profile. Say, all right, what do we want to display here? I'm going to say, I want to display position, jersey number, their shot side, and their age, let's say, and, and their current teams. Let's go down. Let's figure out position is in column B, shot side is in column C. I'll just do B, C, F, G, H. I got to remember that. All we have to change in each of these formulas is instead of looking in column E to get what we want for our reference in our index, now let's just look for whatever's in column B and click enter. And again, we're matching the name that we pick to the name in our profile so that we're getting whatever item is in column B for the athlete that we pick. And column B is position, so we have their position here. Let me type in position. And what's in column C that we wanted? Oh, yeah, their shot side. Right, so we'll say shoots, right? And I think that we had column G in here too, which is their age. And we can make that one decimal again. So we'll say age. What else did we want here? Let's go back. We wanted their jersey number and their current team. So their jersey number, sorry, is in H. Their current team is in F. Let's change this to H. We'll look in column H. And we'll look in column F for their team. So this is jersey, jersey number, and team. There's a different way of going about this where we could adjust these variables and have the information come along for the ride but that's a little bit more complex and we'll get into some of that stuff a little bit later but for now we have the information that we want on our profile and rarely have i ever seen anyone need to ad adjust this information on the fly so it might not be necessary to have a drop down for each of these items but we have all of our information here what I might want to do just very, very quickly is make this thing a little bit prettier. And briefly, what I'm going to do is let's select everything in here. And let's change the font to be that Varela round that I like. I'm going to bold the, oops, bold the name. Make it a little bit bigger, maybe. Maybe I'll bold all, all this stuff. And left align it. And maybe I'll make this color gold and the font white. Okay, great. So now we have a interactive, it should be interactive at least, player profile. And what you should be able to do also with these drop downs is start typing in a name. So Lucas Don Check. And it should just, so everyone with the letter D um, as, a, as the starting letter in one of the names, it should pop up and you can select them that way. And I'd be interested to know what sports you work with and what profile data you like to display for those sports. Leave a comment below with that information and we can all learn from one another. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we're going to build out a testing database and make sure to watch the video on creating player profiles and make sure that you completed this video for displaying the player profile because both will be used when collecting the testing information and displaying the testing information. 
and all other data sets that we go through will have the same framework where profiles and having a player profile are imperative to the success of your framework. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in another video.